<laughs> that was cool. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Beavis and Butthead moments. And this laughing thing. What the hell's with this laughing thing? All the teachers are sick of it. For this list, we'll be looking at the most memorable antics these beloved characters got into over the years. Do you identify more with Beavis or with Butthead? Sound off in the comments. Number 20. A Kite-Related Accident Beavis and Butthead should probably avoid watching documentaries, considering this one lands them in the hospital. Seeing how Benjamin Franklin wanted to prove the presence of electricity and lightning, the boys decided to try it out themselves. Damn it, Beavis. Quit screwing around. We've got an experiment to do. Help me get the stupid kite down. So they fly a kite into a storm in the hopes that lightning will strike. It sure does, and they cause a storm of their own when asked by a reporter just how they ended up in the emergency room. Assuming that a factual program could never be responsible, music videos get the blame instead. I understand that in one of the videos there was fire, explosions, and even lightning. We're not saying there was a connection, but certainly the coincidence is difficult to ignore. It's obvious that kids are imitating what they see. Beavis and Butthead may not quite be able to see what a parody the whole scenario is, but their sentiment isn't wrong. That chick is stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope nobody imitates her. Number 19. The Airplane Shenanigans When Beavis and Butthead headed for the big screen, there were people who wondered if they could go the distance on a feature film. Well, that question was certainly answered with a resounding yes, as the critics largely loved it. But make no mistake, they didn't dial down the humor in the slightest, as evidenced by the airplane scene. Are you two heading for Las Vegas? Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna score. <laughs> oh, well, I hope to score big there myself. I'm mostly gonna be doing the slots. It basically has everything, including a misinterpreted comedy of errors. Butthead's legendary lusting over the air hostess, a takeoff injury, and the return of Beavis's alter ego. Oh, and they nearly crashed the plane. I am Corleone! Did we mention this all happens in just over four minutes? Number 18. Thanksgiving with Kurt Loder Though they returned in 2011, Beavis and Butthead were due to bow out in 1997. Before the original finale, we were treated to this special, where the duo teamed up with MTV's rather deadpan anchor Kurt Loder. Why, you may ask? Well, to cover the Thanksgiving parade, of course. Settle down, Loder. This is the same place you took us to last night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and um, that chick Ginger says hi. <laughs> now, they don't perform their tasks with the same professionalism as the veteran host, even mocking his surname at one point. They spend more time messing around during their segments than anything else. Plus, Butthead makes an interesting case for what he actually looks like. This is what I look like. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be damned. This episode is a unique one-off, but it is very funny, which feels more important than anything else. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just trying to get into the holiday mood, you know. <laughs> Number 17. Kiss and Tell Beavis and Butthead episodes were great in and of themselves, so it's easy to forget that the show was also built around hearing their unfiltered thoughts on music videos featured on MTV back then. Garbage is cool. Yeah, <laughs> I like wind too. <laughs> wind is cool. But there were more than a few notable moments involving these clips. On one particular occasion, when reviewing Kiss, I Love It Loud, the boys really take things to the next level. There's a lot about this video that they draw hilarity from, and the segment gave us some unforgettable lines that have stood the test of time. These guys are pretty cool for a bunch of mimes. And this is a band the duo actually like. Kiss is cool. Yeah. <laughs> when they gonna spit some blood? Number 16. A memorable interview. You know them. You love them. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Beavis and Butthead. Do not adjust your sets. That really is the one and only David Letterman welcoming Beavis and Butthead onto his set. In what has to be one of the funniest movie marketing stunts ever, we were treated to an interview between the host and the boys. It's no surprise that the interview doesn't exactly go Letterman's way, as his guests immediately begin to misbehave. It's about me and Beavis. <sighs> and this chick. Mm -hmm. And I like growing my part. If you know what I mean. <laughs> it really feels like they're there with him, though. 
Bringing live action and animation together in this way can have been easy, but the extra effort was worth it. After all, the veteran interviewer did lend his voice to a particular character in the movie. I scored with these two chicks. True story. <laughs> Number 15. The Debut All the comedy greats have to start somewhere when trying to make their mark. You could argue that for the likes of Will Ferrell, Adam Sandler, and even Eddie Murphy. That place was Saturday Night Live. For Beavis and Butthead, though, it was a 1992 short called Frog Baseball. Dude, a frog! <laughs> This marked Mike Judge's inaugural short starring the pair, and it notably featured them playing the title game. You don't need much imagination to figure out what the pastime entailed. The popularity of the two lead characters was enough to make fans want to see them again. And thus, Beavis and Butthead, as we now know them, were born. Strike one! Number 14 forcing Stewart to access adult sites. And this class is the computer that will act as Highland High School's gateway to the information superhighway. Let's be honest, if you were a teenager during or after the growth of the World Wide Web, then a situation like the one Beavis and Bud had experienced here was probably par for the course. During the first run of Mike Judge's animation, internet use wasn't as simple or widespread as it is now. But the show's title characters certainly don't let that stop them. Come on, I want to see it! I want to see it! <clears throat> Damn it! <clears throat> yeah, come on, Stuart, do it. So resourceful as ever, they bother their poor friend Stuart and make him access adult sites on the school library computer. Their reactions make it seem as though they've struck gold, but they're totally exaggerating, right? Oh, oh my god! Oh, my god. Oh, my god. <laughs> <laughs> Number 13. Going After a Fly the times where Beavis and Butthead draw on the realities of life make up some of their finest moments, and this insect-related incident is the perfect example. We've all been frustrated by a wayward fly pestering us while we're watching TV or minding our own business. Damn it. This thing is starting to piss me off. Most of us would probably just swat it away or ignore it, but Beavis and Butthead love going big, even when faced with mundane problems. So they draw up a litany of unnecessary plans, including one involving way too much poison. <laughs> By the end, they've exacerbated the problem, getting rid of one fly but attracting a swarm of others. Hopefully, nobody tried any of this at home. Number 12. Too Much Corn as we mentioned, much of Beavis and Butthead's time is spent watching music videos, and their witticisms are most often dedicated directly to the content of the clips themselves. This looks like it might rock. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But sometimes, like on this occasion, the boys get a little distracted and go off on a tangent. But we're certainly not complaining. During a viewing of Korn's blind music video, Beavis engages in some self-hypoxia by holding his breath in an attempt to make himself dizzy except it has some rather unexpected and hilarious consequences. He becomes much more recognizant, articulating his critiques on the band with a vocabulary hitherto unexplored. I think that the problem with this video is that it is highly derivative of many popular bands within the genre. Although when viewed on its own uh, merits, it does have a decent Beaver? groove. However, what it has in groove, it lacks in originality. He then forgets the whole thing, and it's absolutely amazing. Beaver. Do well to learn more from... <laughs> ah! Ow! Whoa! What happened? <laughs> Number 11. A Reverse Academic Journey we all know the boys aren't necessarily the sharpest tools in the shed, but the show took things one step further and really addressed their lack of academic prowess in this episode. Another page in their battle book with Principal McVicker, the pair get demoted down to 8th grade. You just don't belong in the ninth grade. Uh, I'm calling the principal of Wilson Elementary School to arrange for you both to go back one grade. Uh, so like, what grade would that put us in? But it doesn't end there as their academic malpractices get them sent all the way back to kindergarten. Naturally, they treat us to some hilarious moments there, managing to be more childish than their new contemporaries. Numbers suck. Are you angry, <laughs> butthead? Yeah, I'm like angry at numbers. Yeah, <laughs> there's like too many of them and stuff. By the end, they're promoted back, not because they're any good at school, but because even kindergarten can't handle them anymore. Number 10, a touching finale? 
No, Beavis and Butthead are not dead. They're being their typical selves, just not at school. But the institution and Principal McVicker think that they are because, well, Beavis told them so on the phone. This is Highland High calling. I'm trying to find out why Beavis and Butthead have not been in school for the past three weeks. Oh, I'm... <coughs> yeah, they're dead. <laughs> and at first, everyone is happier for it. The school thrives and Beavis and Butthead just stay at home, where they are quite content to watch TV. But then a media report about two deaths at Highland High prompts them to return. The best part of their resurrection is the apparent coronary it gives McVicker, after which they stroll off together. Come on, Beavis, let's get out of here. Yeah, you really hit me. Needless to say, it was one heck of a way to end their first run. Number 9. Sex Education Sex Education Week is hardly a mundane occasion. It's probably never a laughing matter for the poor souls who have to teach teenagers about the birds and the bees. But when two of those youths are Beavis and Butthead, it's more akin to torture. So, all sperm cells contain either an X chromosome or a Y chromosome, and... She said sperm. Yet, in a stroke of genius, Principal McVicker turns the tables by forbidding them from laughing. He's doing it as a general punishment, but it means that they have to keep straight faces through Coach Buzzcut's sex ed lessons. The strain on the boys' faces as they sit through the overemphasized terms and unfortunate names and roll call is already funny enough. Well, now that that's out of the way, let's take roll. Butt kiss! Here. <laughs> but the uncontrolled laughs and sweating that follows their egress are downright hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Number 8. Harry Sack Generations who grew up with smartphones will likely not have experienced the amusement of opening a new phone book. But older viewers probably remember the fun that came with looking up the more unfortunately named listings. Hey, buddy, check it out. <laughs> a new phone book. <laughs> cool. <laughs> What's like call someone? When Beavis and Butthead get one, they immediately fixate on the hairy sack entry. You probably don't need any help figuring out what that sounds like. Their month-long campaign of calling the unhinged man ends with poor Mr. Stevenson on the receiving end of some brutal violence. We're not sure what's funnier, the fact that it all started with the boys mispronouncing Mr. Sack's name or the implication that they don't know their own address. You don't know your own address? Uh, uh, tell you what, do you have any mail around? Read me the address off of that. Number 7. A Bloody Sight The medical advice for having a nosebleed generally involves breathing through the mouth and pinching the bridge for a little while. That sounds fairly straightforward, no? Well, if you're butthead, that's not enough. Beavis, <laughs> this is the coolest thing you've ever done. The methods he employs to stop Beavis's nose from bleeding, an injury that he actually caused, are absolutely insane. And it kind of feels like watching a car crash. You can't tear your eyes away from the paper bag over the head attempt or the drink water through the nose attempt. And the improper use of a tampon request ends with both of them suffering the same fate. Here's a quarter. Could you, like, buy me one of those, uh, you know, those things you put in your thing when you, you know, got your thing? <laughs> We'd say they should have just waited for the bleed to stop on its own, but then we wouldn't have this hilarious segment. Number 6. I Got You Babe with Cher During the 90s, it would have been hard to find anyone who didn't enjoy Beavis and Butthead, even just a little bit. And as you know by now, music was a big part of what made the animated series special. Now you're, you've gone multimedia. You, you have entered the, the music business yourself. You, you've done a, a CD, Beavis and Butthead singing with a lot of stars. So imagine how delighted fans were when the duo put out an album of their own called The Beavis and Butthead Experience. And they went above and beyond, giving us a collaboration with Cher. Yes, that Cher. Indeed, the superstar sang her and Sonny's hit, I Got You Babe, with the boys. And it was glorious. We didn't even know we needed this partnership, but now it's impossible to imagine life without it. Is that true that you used to be like, uh, married to that Bono dude? Number 5. An Explosive Reaction The tech support episode is itself a hilarious endeavor that's certainly worthy of checking out, but the inclusion of Katy Perry's firework music video provided us with all the more laughs. Apparently, 
Beavis's tastes have somewhat evolved during the show's 14-year hiatus. I gotta say, um, I kind of like this song, you know? Uh, okay, Beavis. As it turns out, despite years of singing along with rock bands and wearing a Metallica shirt, he's a Katy Perry fan. Firework takes him to his happy place and even inspires him to put the title explosives down his pants. You're a dumbass, Beavis. <laughs> hey, no one here is judging, especially because the song is a bop. But Butthead is when he insists that Perry isn't speaking directly to Beavis. Number 4. Like Father, Like Son For the entire run of Beavis and Butthead, there was no real sign of either boy's parents anywhere. In fact, they were quite conspicuous by their absence, especially since Beavis and Butthead were school-aged kids. But the movie did feed our curiosity. In the desert, the boys stumble upon two very similar-looking and laughing roadies. Hey, one of you bastards got a match? Uh, yeah. My butt and your, uh, butt. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> At no point does it occur to any of the four that they may be related, but it's resoundingly obvious to the audience. Being a Mike Judge work, this isn't some hallmark reunion either, as the Motley Crew roadie manages to make a fire bigger with his flatulence. <laughs> and just for extra kicks, Butthead's probable father is voiced by David Letterman. Here's another true story. About 15 years ago, we stopped in this uh, toilet uh, called Highland. Really? That's where we're from. Number 3. Hardly Working What does Beavis, Butthead, and a job temping at an office equal? Well, the boys sort of thrive in an office environment in their own unique, destructive way. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would you like a copy of my butt? No, we haven't entered into some sort of bizarre land where up is down. Deciding to forego the school day, Beavis and Butthead stumble upon a real estate agency and accidentally start working there. As it happens, their immature antics, which include Butthead photocopying his behind, don't go over too badly. Mr. Muller put you up to this, didn't he? Oh my, the stories I could tell you. Despite breaking the office computer and phone, the boys don't actually get fired. So we guess this counts as a win for them and us. Number 2. Returning to Hijinks When Beavis and Butthead ended its first run, no one expected them to return from the sunset into which they walked. But in 2011, the show returned to audiences new and old. Mike Judge kicked things off without missing a beat by having the boys, who hadn't aged a day, watch the Twilight Saga eclipse. Is Bella a zombie? She's always just like standing there with her mouth open and she acts like she's dead. Shh, quiet. Hey, 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 sorry, sorry. That combined with the related discussion in class leads them to believe that they'd be more attractive if they were undead. Seeing a werewolf, they decide to get him to infect them. But naturally, the plan ends up being less straightforward than they think and causes them to fall ill. It's a true return to form. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Cornholio Beavis's unusual alter ego was the source of many hilarious moments. Cornholio usually comes out to play whenever Beavis is overly stimulated or is in the midst of some form of mental break. What's your problem, Beavis? The alternative persona is simply Beavis with a shirt pulled over his head, going on a quest that fans of the show can probably quote verbatim. I am Cornholio. <laughs> He's chaotic, wild, and truly iconic. His mere existence makes the show funnier. Cornholio ended up becoming a running gag with the character being revisited numerous times, even making an appearance in the movie. I am Cornholio. I need picata for my bunghole. You'll have to wait your turn, sir. Are you threatening me? My bunghole will not wait. It goes without saying that Beavis and Butthead wouldn't be what it is without him. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.